Okay, so what we're going to discuss is, uh, well, page two, okay, it's a little bit more general subject, so please please switch the gears. So what we're going to discuss is gauge topological nature of the superconductor insulated transition and the topological nature of high temperature superconductivity. Basically, I think that at the end of the story, well, since we're a little bit late, I have to cut it a little bit. Um, so basically what we are going to propose at the end is the underlying mechanism of high temperature superconductivity and pseudo gap state. The problems which were considered to be the most fundamental unresolved problems in condensed matter physics till now. Uh, the work was done in collaboration with Cristina Diamantini from Perugia and uh, Carla Trugenberger. And I owe a lot to discussions uh, to Duncan Haldane, Michael Kosterlitz, and Tony Leggett. Okay, so the story actually started with the discovery of the superconductor to insulate the transition. Okay, what is, what is here is this just, okay, iconic picture obtained by Alan Golden's group, uh, but first study were done even like, okay, in times immemorial by Shalinikov long, long ago, who first saw the suppression of the uh, superconductivity in thin films. Uh, then it was actually seminal contribution by Myron Strangin, who identified what is the right parameter, which okay, can be considered as driving transition, <clears throat> which is the resistance okay, sheet resistance or resistance per square. But coming back to this, as I said, iconic picture by Alan Goldman, we see a beautiful effect, which was first supposed to be impossible because in two dimensions, and this is two dimensional film, the phase transition will look okay at as impossible. So we see that with the variation of the sheet resistance, we can see transition from the superconducting behavior to the insulating behavior. This insulating behavior because was checked, uh, was checked uh, okay, by exhibiting thermal activation behavior, which is a sign of the insulator. And what I would like, okay, can you see this picture? Because on my screen, it's sort of, okay. Yes, I can see. Ah, you can see the, no okay, the full picture. Okay, very well. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, superconductor insulated transition curves obtained in group by Tatiana, in group of Tatiana Baturina. And this is the sharpest superconductor insulated transition observed on titanium nitride films. And this was very important thing to which we come back later. Then a beautiful scenario for what is going on at this transition was proposed by Matthew Fisher. So the picture which he offered was that in the superconductor, you have condensate of the cover pairs, then you should have vortices. If they are there somehow pinned, then you have a perfect superconductor. As you increase the resistance, it means that you increase actually effects of localizations and then Cooper pairs become localized and vortices make a condensate. This, well, actually this statement was so much ahead of its time and so beautiful that it was even not noticed. Uh, okay, let's say how deep it is because the first question which appears is how can Cooper pairs be localized? Because they are not particles. If we are within the BCS, let's say orthodoxy, then Cooper pairs are not particles. They can exist only in a condensate. Uh, and well, they can be even called bosons. And another good question was how can vortices, which are in a sense classical objects because they do have uh, normal core, how can they make something like Bose condensate? Well, 
Anyway, the statements were taken for granted. They were believed. And this for community was a very smart thing to do because this concept appear, appeared very deep. And basically what is going on what was going on afterwards was the development of these beautiful concepts. Okay, so uh, coming back to the data obtained by Tatiana Baturina and her group, it was noticed that if you take insulating sample, but very close to superconductor insulator transition, it shows another remarkable properties. So if you, just measure, well, just the IV curve with differential resistance, uh, conductance, I'm sorry. What you can see is the following. As soon as you cool down the sample enough, it becomes super resistant. Actually, the resistance is infinity experimentally. And then it was suggested that the state which is seen is the state which is dual to superconductivity, and it was called a super insulator. Uh, actually, the existence of such a state can be understand, understood very simple from the very fundamental concepts. And the fundamental concept, the most fundamental concept of quantum mechanics as we know it, is uncertainty principle. And we know this formulation was given by Anderson, that according to this uncertainty principle, the uncertainty in the phase and uncertainty in the number of particles in the condensate amplitude, the wave function, should compete. And then we can immediately see that superconductivity as we know from like theory of the Meissner effect, means that your phase is fixed, so its uncertainty is zero. But this immediately means that the number of of particles in the condensate is not, it's undetermined. And then it means that the particles that comprise condensate cannot scatter because the scattering means the possibility of measuring their number. And well, therefore it is in, it's infinite conductance and basically we can stop here the theory of the superconductivity, superconductivity because the rest is just, just okay. It can be viewed as an exercise for good students. Everything can be derived from there. So we did construct full and complete theory of superconductivity in one line. Now, if we follow the same line of consideration, but suppose that we manage somehow to pin charge carriers, and therefore the uncertainty in the number of the particles is zero, then it immediately means that Cooper pairs get pinned, cannot move, but then it means that we have uncertain phase, but then by Josephson relation, we immediately have that we can have finite voltage across the system, without any current. This means infinite resistance. So it means that if we have superconductivity as a phenomenon, then we should have super insulation as well. Basically what we can, okay, summarizing the thing, we can notice that, okay, that this existence of a super insulator on the other side of the super insulator, superconductor, sorry, super insulator transition, as now we can call it, is the sequence, consequence of duality of, okay, it can be called super conductivity, super insulation duality. And this is actually duality between Cooper pairs and vortices, but more generally, this is very, okay, well famous, magnetic, electric magnetic duality. And this kind of duality was explored by, okay, these three remarkable co-authors who constructed gauge theory of Josephson junction and actually found theoretically, and this was done even 12 years before the experiment, they confirmed, well, not confirmed, predicted the existence of the super insulating phase, at least in the context of Josephson Junction Array. Now, okay, let's inspect the concept of duality. 
If we write down Maxwell equation, we can immediately see that duality actually is not quite complete. It's uh, the full duality we have only in the vacuum where we don't have currents. The full duality cannot exist in a material because then we have introduced magnetic currents, magnetic charges, and okay, nobody have ever seen them yet because we can immediately see that actually if we use, use okay, that the existence of the magnetic charges is not actually consistent with the quantum theory because if we use usual canonical Hamiltonian formulation of Maxwell equations, then we have to immediately obtain the absence of the magnetic currents. Well, nevertheless, let's forget this for the moment and let us try to construct dual gauge theory for the superconductor insulator transition anyway. And the first thing which we can notice that there is one beautiful effect, which as we see, okay, in a moment becomes very important in the theory of superconductor insulator transition. This is, let's say, inherently topological uh, runoff bomb effect. This is the illustration of the effect in this audience. Of, of course, it's very well noticed. Uh, or known and okay, therefore I'm not going to dwell on it okay for too long time. But okay, one thing, one consequence is important to stress that a rod of bomb effect, this topological effect, introduces one more length range force of pure topological origin. And what we have to do now is to construct the theory. Actually, this is a extremely simple, like textbook manner, okay, following just will the way of constructing theoretical physics outlined, actually introduced into our physics by Amy Noter. So, and then we will employ a Shao Gang Wen idea of how to introduce topological current in the matter using the gauge fields. So the idea, okay, I like skip this action we're going to write down in a moment. So what we're going to do is the following. Basically, we start for the moment with vortices. This is, okay, the uh, charge and uh, vortex currents uh, introduced in uh, relativistic notations. Those are world line for vortices and uh, Cooper pairs. And now, we have to take into account our own of bomb Kasher interactions. And what we have to do, we have to take into account their, in fact, uh, local character because all the fields, all the forces do have local character in our physics now. So we have to introduce gauge fields, which mediate them. And then immediately just by symmetry consideration, we can write down the action, which is called chern simons action. So those two are kinetic, uh, okay, for the current. And this one is so-called chern simons term, which accounts explicitly a of bomb effect. The next thing we can do and must do is to add the derivatives. Again, from the symmetry consideration, and then we end up with the action. And this action contains all the physics of superconductor insulator transition. And we can immediately see that we do have one additional parameter or energy parameter, which was like overlooked here. New mass, which is okay, formed by charge and vortex energy. Well, people who are doing charge density waves actually knows this term pretty well because this is just the energy of the soliton which can be formed in sine gradon model. Well, as I said, the action encodes all the physics in superconductor to insulator transition. But before we do it, we can try to recover rigorous electric magnetic duality. Actually, for this, we have to introduce, as we know pretty well, what is called Dirac monopoles. 
And after we introduce direct monopoles and introduce direct quantization condition, now we are like, okay, good with quantum mechanics. This is very well known. And then we can construct the real theory of the superconductor insulated transition. And we can see what monopoles are doing there. To understand what is the effect of the monopoles, we have to consider the effect of type two superconductors, which we know pretty well. well. We know that if we apply magnetic field to type two superconductor, it penetrates in the form of these tiny filaments, magnetic or abricosive vortices. But if we imagine for the moment that we live just like in two, well, in the universe where only our superconducting sample does, okay, does exist, then we can think that the source of the magnetic field are monopoles which are on the surface of our, of our system, of our universe, and vortices appear because Cooper pair condensate starts immediately rotate uh, around these filaments and squeeze this magnetic field into magnetic vortices. And now, if we look into equation, which are obtained from our action, we can see that what happens in the super insulator is exactly the symmetric picture. The only thing is that if we have two charges, let's say Cooper pair and okay, which is just excess of the Cooper pairs local, and then minus two E is a deficiency of local Cooper uh, of the local Cooper pairs, then immediately monopole condensate is supposed to do the same and form what is called Polyakov's electric string. Actually, okay, this thing, and this is absolutely symmetric situation. Uh, the only thing that instead of vortices, we have Polyakov's electric string, and this electric string binds Cooper pairs, bind charges and prevent them from motion. And this is the mechanism for the infinite resistance. What is remarkable that is if we search in the literature, then we find out that long before all this story, the term super insulator was introduced by Gerard Toft, who explained to his fellow colleagues, what is the quark matter and why quarks cannot be seen, let's say outside the hadrons. So what we established is so that uh, our idea of how Cooper pairs are pinned in the super insulator conforms beautifully well with this uh, Toft concept, Toft suggestion, and basically that this, okay, super insulator, in a sense, is equivalent to the quark matter in hadrons. The same mechanism of binding charges by electric string. And this immediately, okay, proposes the phase diagram for a superconductor insulator transition, and immediately explains one of the features which remained puzzling since its very discovery. Actually, it was known and noticed that in some sense, the transition from super, uh, superconductor to insulator may be not direct, but can go through the metallic phase, which was called, well, strange metal, bose metal, uh, other names and the origin of this phase remained a puzzle and was not and is was not explained okay at all and we can immediately see that this phase may appear again from the uncertainty principle if uh, quantum fluctuations are enough in a strong enough to destroy both condensate of monopoles and condensate of Cooper pairs. And then the structure which forms is topological insulator. Well, because the time is short, I cannot okay, stop more on it. So we revealed the origin and the nature of this both strange bose metal. This is in fact topological insulator where uh, conductance is mediated by the edge. Well, these uh, trajectories, edge trajectories actually made what is called chalker coddington uh, uh, structure through the sample. 
uh, and okay, so the conductance there is mediated by uh, um, this edge uh, gapless bosonic modes. Now we can move, okay, next, okay, to the next, uh, okay, important point. Actually, we have to demonstrate why monopoles are supposed to appear in the material. Again, since time is short, I cannot, okay, uh, talk about this in deserving detail, but I summarize that, okay, that actually in the, as we have shown, in the vicinity of the superconductor, super uh, insulated transition, which is quantum uh, critical point, the system acquires self-induced uh, granular electronic structure with the characteristic size of granule of about few coherence lengths. And then this sort of equivalent to the Josephson junction array. And in this structure, monopoles appear very naturally because the barrier for their appearance is very low. And now, okay, to, yeah, this I have already said, so let's move on. So this completely explains this phase diagram obtained in the vicinity of the superconductor insulated transition and resolve the puzzle of the Bose metal state, which was considered to be challenging our understanding of physics of electronic systems. Now we can turn in the remaining few minutes to the problem of high temperature superconductivity. This is the usual, this is the usual uh, phase diagram known to like everybody. And well, so there are two puzzles. One is the nature of high temperature superconductivity and another puzzle, which also what is okay if you like go to this nature physics nature and another fancy publications it's always like uh, referred to as one of the main puzzles of condensed matter physics and it is its understanding is considered the key to understanding high temperature superconductivity and this phase it was shown beautifully experimentally that this is a uh, like indeed a distinct phase uh, pseudo gap state shows several in beautiful effects. It has magnetic electric effect. It shows pneumaticity. It shows T squared temperature dependence of the resistance, which is characteristic for Fermi liquid. But what more? It was established by beautiful Ivan Bozhevich experiment that the possible charge carriers are rather Cooper pairs, but not electrons there. Okay, so, okay, so let's move. Now, since high temperature superconductivity is almost always accompanied by superconductor insulated transition, then we can use the same machinery absolutely immediately. And then we can do one more thing. Actually symmetry, allows for one more term to be added. This is in field theory, this is called theta term. And this immediately produces a magnetic electric effect, which is observed indeed in the pseudo gap state. And what more, this beautiful, okay, theta term is a topological term by its nature because, okay, doing just the standard, okay, like textbook, like integration by part, we can immediately see that this term also is a surface term. So this is inherently topological effect. And now what we can immediately see, again, I have to be short now, that the presence of this term immediately means that in the presence, in its presence, the Cooper pairs and we have performed Cooper pairs in the pseudo gap state, immediately come, okay, make dions combining themselves with the monopoles. And then we can, can immediately see that the dion condensate immediately forms this <clears throat> Fermi liquid in these edges of the system and immediately shows this T squared resistance. 
actually we can immediately, okay, then these dyons are responsible for magnetic electric effect, and it can be demonstrated that, that they also show the pneumaticity. So we do have explanation for all the for all the observed properties of the pseudogap state, but within one theory. And now going to superconducting state, again, I have only time for a summary. We can show that this high temperature superconducting state is actually a state to a fundamental Cooper pair condensate uh, coexists with the monopole condensate or okay, remaining of a dying condensate. And this is the reason of why we have high temperature superconductivity, because monopoles provide an additional glue for the Cooper pairs straightening it. Well, then I have to, okay, to go to my summary. So we demonstrated that super conductor insulated transition is inherently quantum phenomenon and then that it's basically a topological inherently topological transition we can uh, we can construct a theory of the gauge top topological transition superconductor insulated transition and reveal underlying mechanism of this of all the phases and we can show that the same gauge topological theory reveals the nature of the pseudogap state and mechanism, not microscopic, but sort of on a phenomenological level, the mechanism of high temperature superconductivity, which is the pseudogap state can be called dion topological super insulator and the corresponding superconducting state is enhanced because magnetic monopoles strengthen Pairing. Thank you very much, and I stop here.